Yes, what's up? Jay here, aka Feelit, bringing you a walkthrough of Beatsurfing's plugin, Cheat Code, made in collaboration with iconic producer Che Pope. Now I'm planning on making two edits of this video, one shorter one that just kind of runs through everything and gives you a taste of what the plugin can do, and then a longer one with a lot more detail to it. Now in short, Cheat Code is a multi-effects processor with 16 different modules that each provide unique sound design capabilities. I'll start at the top and work my way down from left to right, beginning with this settings menu. This is where you can see your license and you can deactivate it if you'd like to for moving it across to different machines or whatever. We have our updates tab as well as the ability to toggle on or off for daily checking. I'm still using a beta version so we should have access to the graphics capabilities here. We have the credits here, we have a link to the Beatsurfing website, and then a user guide that opens as a PDF, which I much prefer rather than a web page. Next, we have this master functions bar. Now hitting undo will undo whatever parameter was last changed. Then we have the redo button, which is pretty self-explanatory, and the master randomize button. Now this only randomizes whatever modules you have loaded. It doesn't populate your instance of the plugin with other modules. And then we have this clear function, which clears all of the modules and allows us to start from scratch. And lastly, we have this on off button, which might be more useful than the native plugin enable disable function for live performances or depending on your DAW. Next we have this presets section. Here you can load one of the many presets that the team have made or you can save and load your own here. Simply clicking on a preset or one of these buttons up here will load a preset. Now to the right of this preset section is where you can populate up to four modules at once. At the top of each module is this grab tab that you can use to rearrange each of the four modules. Next to that is the drop down list of the 16 modules that you can choose from, as well as a none to leave that slot empty. Now, when we have a module loaded, we gain access to this randomize button, and that'll randomize all of the parameters within that specific module. Next to that is the bypass button for that particular module, so we can turn it off and allow our signal to pass directly to the next module if we want to. Now, let's talk about some things that are common across all of the modules. Every single one will have a visualizer that directly corresponds to the parameters that you have dialed in for that particular module. Now here's a list of the 16 modules. I'll introduce each one with the short description that describes them on the Beatsurfing website. Now this one is crazy and very interesting from a sound design perspective. It's kind of complex, so bear with me. The way it was described to me, and I think the best way to picture it, is as a pair of DJ decks. And it's portrayed like this in the visualizer. With this module, we have the capability of deciding which deck is moving forward and which is being reversed. Alternatively, we can have both moving forward or both being reversed. I'm still trying to wrap my head around some of the inner workings of this. I'll adjust the direction here for four back, which means one forward and one backwards, and then show you some examples. Here's our dry samples. Now with the module. This is great for creating some weird warped sound design effects. Then we have the more melody friendly semitones option. This cleverly steps up the speed at which our tape decks are playing back in mathematical increments that correlate to semitone pitches. How insane is that? Then this ratio selector allows us to choose either having both decks playing at the same speed or having one deck playing at half the speed of the other or the other way around. And the slicer, I love this one. Uh, it's almost similar concept to the shuffler, but this time we have patterns rather than a sequencer. And we also have the inclusion of this vinyl effect. So we're getting different frequency band triggered by the pattern and the vinyl pitch jumps in between, but we have a lot of control over all of that. Here's our dry samples. And running through the module. There's some very clever trickery going on 
uh, with this shufflers module. It essentially allows us to split our signal into three different bands using this crossover here. We can then define the pattern of our shuffle, and here's where it gets really interesting. We can then choose the speed at which each band is passed through that pattern. Not only that, but we can offset each band by its own increments, and then we can mix each band in and out for the full signal. Now this is a really cool effect, possibly my favorite in terms of sound design, especially for electronic stuff. This is a grain delay with a difference and it has the ability to shape otherworldly spaces that can be both sharp and immediate or long, textural and quite beautiful. I'll set the mix of this one all the way up and just play our two different samples through whatever preset is currently loaded. I'll play each sample dry once and then we'll push it through the plugin. And here's with bubble greens. Another one of my favorites, this unique chorus gives us seven different engines with different stereo and textural processing for each. Again, here are our dry samples. And here's our percussion sample running through it. And our string sample. Quite extreme there. This plugin uses a nice pitch LFO algorithm to subtly detune your signal and give it a tape-like warping that feels smooth and natural. Here's our dry samples. And with the opening preset. Obviously more noticeable on the longer sample than the shorter. Now this is a great, effective down sampler with simple controls. I love that it doesn't try to be anything that it's not, but it still provides powerful performance controls if we want it. Uh, I'm also a big fan of the visualizer. Here's our dry samples. Now with the plugin. Now this is a great module to add some smooth movement and a bit of added texture too. This tone shaper can create some really twisted differences and we have eight different engines and a fair few controls as per. Here's our dry samples. Now with the plugin. Now this is such an interesting design. It's essentially multiplying the delay signal over and over four times. So initially it creates two delays and then four and then eight. Here's our dry samples running through the plugin. I've kept the mix at 50% so we can still hear our dry signal. And of course, being a delay, it's gonna be more noticeable on more transient information like that first sample. Now we're capable of creating some beautiful textures with this one. And we also have some nice hidden features. Here's our dry samples. and through the delay. Underneath this, we have that powerful drift functionality again, allowing us to choose a frequency and the amount of that drift. Now this is one of the nicest reverbs I've come across. It's not overly convoluted, pardon the pun, but it's still capable of giving us a wide range of beautiful spaces. Here's our dry samples. And through this module. Now this is a nice, choppy sequence delay to get some interesting rhythms with a built-in step sequencer. Here's our dry samples. And running through this module. Very nice option for adding some grit and texture to your signal. Here's our dry samples. 
and with this module. This is not just a regular panner. We've got a ton of controls to give us a natural sound and smooth control over our stereo environment if we want it. Here's our dry sample. Of course, this is going to be more noticeable on the longer sample, but let's try it. Another module that I love. Such a creative and musical way to deal with delay and create unique delay patterns. Here's our dry samples. Now I'll tap out a rhythm here and show you the effect on the samples, but I'll keep the mix at around 50% so you can hear the dry signal too. Again, much more noticeable on the sharper transients. Now we have this modulation control section, which sounds like it's affecting the modulation relative to the engine that you have selected. So for example, if we have pan selected up here and the starting modulation set to low and the end modulation set to high, then we'll hear a slow panning at the start and more extreme panning towards the end of the pattern. Let's try it out. Sounds about right. It's another really interesting way to modulate your sound. And this one kind of reminds me a little bit of what we might find in a tape emulator, although I don't think that that's what it was designed to be necessarily. But let me show you. Here's our dry samples. And here's with the module. And lastly, let's talk about our four macro controls, which you can assign almost any parameter to, including a lot of the modes and the buttons, etc. We can even assign the routing parameters to it, which we'll get to in a second. One thing to bear in mind is that none of the performance windows are assignable to a macro. They're deliberately designed to be an on-the-fly performance effect. Now to name a macro, we simply click on the title and name it. And then to assign a macro, we click this edit button and we move whatever parameter we want to assign to that macro. Then we'll see these two points appear on that parameter, and the further you move it, the further apart they'll get. Those are your low and high points for the macro. Now to adjust those, we can just go back and click low on the macro itself and choose where we want that low point to be, and vice versa with high. Now that macro will only affect between those two parameters. Now we can assign as many parameters to a single macro as we want. I don't think there's a limit to how many we can do. But it's worth noting that the parameters themselves within each module are not automatable, but the macros are. And lastly, this bottom bar starts with a master in level. And then here's where we can discern whether we're routing our signal in parallel or in series. And if you're not sure what that means, we're deciding whether the signal travels through one module before reaching the next, or if it passes through both modules simultaneously. Let me just load up another one here so we can see exactly what we're talking about. So this routing parameter will be in conjunction with these two modules here. And this is the case for each pair of module slots. Now, as we move along to the next routing parameter, it's important to note that the signal it has received is a sum of the previous routing. So regardless of whether you chose series or parallel, that signal will now be summed in order for you to decide whether you want to mix it in with the next module in series or parallel too. Do you see what I mean? The amount of detail here is crazy. And finally, we have an output volume as well as a master mix fader to discern how much of the total effects you want in your mix. So that's it. If you're still here, there's a chance you're as blown away by the power of this plugin as I am. And now I think the secret is to kind of have learned all of that and then forget about it completely and go and randomize and tweak things to your heart's content and make some crazy sounds. And I think there's just no end to the possibilities of this thing, both in electronic music and for live instrumentation and hardware. So that's it. Let's go make some music.